Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, modeling soil degradation and specifically the influence of different irrigation practices and uh, changing climate conditions on soil degradation. Uh, when we think about agricultural production in uh, uh, arid and dry land regions, often the only way for that to occur is through the use of uh, marginal quality lands and low quality water resources. Um, if we don't do this carefully, then we can have the undesired effect of soil degradation. We want our soil to have nice aggregates allowing for uh, what easy movement of water and air through the soil. But if we use irrigation water that is high in salinity, and particularly if that irrigation water has a high SAR or the relative uh, sodium content, um, then we can get to a situation where the soil particles are dispersed, the hydraulic conductivity of the soil is uh, degraded, uh, and that can be a major barrier in terms of future agricultural production. Uh, these issues are widespread throughout the parts of the world that are uh, dry, and uh, as populations continue to grow, as water becomes more scarce, uh, I think it's really important that we be able to understand how a particular irrig irrigation regime is going to interact with a, a given soil and a known climate and what the risk of long-term soil degradation would be. In the models that exist so far for understanding how uh, salinity and sodicity cause soil degradation, uh, we believe that there's a major gap. That is that they uh, treat the processes of uh, degradation and rehabilitation as being uh, entirely reversible. And the experimental evidence that's out there suggests that that's not the case, that there's uh, a good deal of hysteresis in these processes. And by ignoring that, uh, we think that we're missing a good chunk uh, in our ability to properly assess the risk of degradation. Sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. Uh, so, We've been working on, on this modeling effort in a few directions over uh, you know, the last recent period. Uh, we have a dynamic model that is able to consider how water content, salinity, and sodicity affect hydraulic conductivity, and hydraulic conductivity is a stand-in for soil degradation. Our model is designed to run over uh, long periods of time, and another nice feature of it is that it is uh, capable of handing, handling stochastic simulations. So we can run uh, a lot of different simulations at once and then uh, get the, a sense of mean values, which we can then use to study the distribution of the values at the end. And from there, we can begin to talk about the risk of soil degradation uh, given a particular set of initial conditions. Now, the uh, plots that you see here, uh, they're an iteration of the model that's in, uh, treats hydraulic conductivity as being reversible. So we have degradation in hydraulic conductivity during the, the rainy season part of our simulation. And when uh, irrigation water is introduced into the, into the simulation again, the hydraulic conductivity repairs. Uh, we don't think that that's actually what's happening again. We think that there's this hysteresis. So to emphasize how much that hysteresis could affect uh, our assessment of degradation, we ran a quick simulation uh, over the course of 20 years, and we imposed a very crude uh, mechanism of understanding uh, irreversible changes in hydraulic conductivity. And you see in the dashed line that the risk of long-term uh, degradations in hydraulic conductivity was very different between the two simulations. Uh, so as we move forward, we're working on uh, more robust and complex ways to handle uh, this uh, hysteresis in the uh, degradation and rehabilitation uh, and look forward to presenting on those findings uh, the next time that we meet. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you showed that uh, you based this uh, research on uh, modeling. Uh, how does that relate to what happens uh, in uh, on the field, um, one second. We think that uh, you know, you mean the the level of degradation that would happen in a field. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, in general, we think that the estimations for uh, degradation in the in modeling they slightly overestimate uh, the degradations that would happen in field conditions. The uh, soil column experiments that degradation is based upon uh, they usually tend to show more degradation than would happen in field conditions, but that's not necessarily a, a bad thing from our perspective because if the goal is to understand the risk uh, and if long-term degradation is the potential threat, then uh, it's uh, good to err on the side of being conservative uh, because if we err on the side of being risky, then we can get to a situation where uh, the soil has uh, just been lost and repairing a degraded soil is uh, known to be very costly and uh, difficult. Thank you for the talk, Isaac. Um, I, I wanted to know, um, is your study is in the context of the wasted uh, um, um, wastewater, uh, treated wastewater in Israel, or is it uh, on, on general supply? Um, it's in the, I would say that it's in the context of treated wastewater in the sense that because much of the agricultural production in Israel is uh, only possible with treated wastewater, then that's one of the motivations uh, for looking at this research. But our, our model itself is uh, capable of considering water of any quality, um, whether it be treated wastewater, water that is uh, of even worse quality or uh, water that is better quality. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Can I ask a question, Isaac? Yeah. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so what is the expected um, outcome of this degradation of soil? Uh, like, uh, do you expect it uh, to, how, how do you expect it to, to influence the trees, the produce of the trees? Once the soil is uh, degraded, in the, there, are, there are different types of soil degradation, but if it's degraded in the sense that we're talking about, uh, then it's uh, very damaging to agricultural output or other aspects, you know, natural tree growth, uh, particularly if the top layer of the soil um, can no longer uh, conduct water and air, then uh, if water and air cannot get to where the root zone is, then th the trees are really under threat or whatever else is growing there. Yeah, my question was more about, uh, like, if you know the... Uh, um, how how damaging it is, like how much of the produce is gonna, um, how, in, in percent, or do you, do you look for it? Uh, do you know how many percent of the produce is gonna be lost because of soil degradation, for example? Um, it's a question that we have put on the, like the long-term horizon, uh, but not one that I can give a good answer to right now. Okay, thank you. Um, if, unless somebody else has another question, then, uh, I think that I will uh, thank everybody for coming. It was, uh, nice to see you all uh, through Zoom and, uh, in, uh, uh Daphne spirit, uh, I hope that we can celebrate deserts for the rest of the day. Um, and, uh, we appreciate, uh, everybody's participa participation and, uh, thank you again. Thank you.